Hey folks, it's Clyde here, live from the Leechburg Light Studio, and uh, I have a video that I wanted to do only because um, some people have asked me uh, how I did my twig trees, how I made them with my RGB dumb nodes, and um, suggestions on how to put pixels on them and have them all spaced and so forth. So uh, what I want to show you is this is a uh, this is a uh, a twig tree, the, the bottom portion, it came in two pieces. It's six foot tall. The other half is in the house. But this is plenty good for uh, being able to explain the whole um, process for you. What I started with was I started with measurements um, using the original lights that came on this Home Depot twig tree. Uh, it, originally, there were five LEDs on all of these lower branches here. Uh, I drew a schematic, and I'll probably throw the picture up here in a second. of the different levels and layers and so forth, how many LEDs were on each branch on each layer as it went up to the uh, top of the tree. What I came up with was 150 LEDs on the entire tree, which is what the box said. And what I wanted to do was duplicate that. Now, I didn't like how very dim th the tree was, and I was kind of concerned with only using 150 RGB nodes or RGB pixels. Um, but after I began uh, doing the first tree, this was the first tree that I did, um, and it came out very, very well, uh, I realized that uh, it was not going to be an easy task to get every individual bulb on its own individual branch without having to do a lot of... Um, without having to do a lot of uh, additional wiring and splicing and soldering. So I'm going to take you through the steps that it took me to uh, come up with the, the best way to wire this tree to make it look like it came from the factory fresh with pixels. So the first thing I really did was I removed all of the original LED lights and just threw them away. There's no reason to keep them. I'm never going to use them. And... Uh, and the second thing I did was I ordered these dumb RGB nodes from Ray. They're 100% white wire, and the spacing is his typical spacing at roughly about 4 inches, maybe slightly under 4 inches, but around 4 inches average per RGB node. What I did was I matched that up with the LEDs, and that came out to be about the same spacing. So how did I get all of the individual nodes on each branch and make it look like, if you stand back, how do you make it look like it is a wire harness made for this tree? And the answer was simple. I had to, uh, take, a, I had to take a measuring device, a, a, a ruler, which I don't have one, uh, a, a tape measure right now, but I do have a ruler, and I measured all of the branches going the whole way up. Once I got the length of the branch and I knew what my spacing was, I knew kind of how far to start my RGB nodes back from the... Uh, the edge so that I could get the spacing I needed but the spacing wasn't important the higher up I went the wider spacing was more important the lower I was and uh, knowing that now maybe I'd have ordered a couple separate strings that were just wider spacing so that I could have a little bit more even lighting between the branches but in the end it really didn't matter because they still came out nice they still came out even and the trees look bright enough okay looking down here you'll see this wire with the original pigtail on it and uh, where that goes is that comes all the way up up underneath here it's this is just the bench is holding this up comes all the way up underneath and it leads to the first RGB node or pixel if you want to do pixels and I, I measure out one two three four five LEDs just like the art uh, the um, 
individual LEDs that were on the tree to begin with. And then I zip tied the first node somewhere in the middle of the string so there was no sag and the top node. I zip tied all three of those. I left the other ones loose because basically that's how the other ones were. Is some were loose and some were, uh, were nailed down with these little clips. So I took five and went this way and then I took the other five and went this way and I made ten. Whenever I got to the tenth node I made a cut and I inserted a wire and this is where I had to measure. I had to measure from this area here all the way down and up to the other side. Once I got a measurement, I was able to cut the custom length from there, from there down to here and back up to here. And the tree wants to fall over. The, uh, that custom length there that I cut, I had them all marked out on my bench. I had a piece of paper with them all written. And I had a cut list before I started doing the actual tree. So it would t the cut list would have me doing uh, one, two, th three, four, five sets for the lower branches. And then whenever you go from the lower branch up to the next branch, that was a different length. And I had a cut list for those separate individual ones that went from the lower up to the upper. So basically what I did was I made V's with all of, the, all of this ex extension for core wire. Now, what I'll do graphically here in a second, I'll set up, uh, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about, how this looks, this wire harness looks before you put it on the tree. Okay, so what I have here is this is, this is just for mock, um, just to show you the, the, the process of events was I had a cut list, which told me I, I needed an entry cable that had a pigtail on it. And then I had a certain length to go from the pigtail that led to the controller all the way up to the first RGB node. And this line, that length, usually was about two or three meters, depending on where I thought the controller was going to be. And uh, in this case, the controller sits right at the feet of the uh, tree. So I really didn't need real long uh, leads for this. But in any event, this here would be soldered uh, with the first RGB node and I would connect it up and I'd test it as I went. I would solder and heat shrink this and uh, and then I would make sure that this section worked. Now this was 10 RGB nodes that I counted out and um, now this isn't to scale for every single branch but I would take these 10 RGB nodes I'd have them here and then I would measure out the next distance with the next piece of wire, typically this was about 25 inches, I think. and that would get me from uh, that would get me the V shape to run me from the very tip of the branch all the way into the center, back out to the next tip of the branch. So this was kind of a V shape pattern, and then I would take the wire, run it back in, and then back out to the next branch where I would take my next RGB set and I would run it in and then out again. So this is basically how I made the tree was in a zigzag V pattern. So I had power coming in and then the RGBs coming back down and going to the next one. Then I would have this power coming out, down and around, up to the next branch then from the top of that branch going out to the next branch and so on and so forth. This wasn't a hard concept to uh, come up with, but if this was a whole lot of work. Sometimes inserting the, uh, two, uh, the, the, the 25 inch spacer between each set of dumb RGBs, this here was four points of contact to solder, heat shrink and then heat shrink over top of and then you get all the way over here and then it, you'd have to heat shrink and solder again then you'd have to after you heat shrink and solder you had to heat shrink and solder again and then you heat shrink and solder again and heat shrink and solder again and all this time all of this every single um extension between the rgbs they all had to be cut trimmed back tinned and prepared to be soldered so I would spend all of my time doing prep work to build this. 
and the time came probably maybe two hours of setup where I did nothing but cut the wires to the length and this is how I cut my wires. I, I had a start point on my bench. I had measured out the key. Now this is, I did this in the, uh, in the basement. I had a workshop two years ago and I set up this exact numbers that I needed to cut and I had my cut list on a notepad and I would just sit here and I would have my cord sitting on the ground on the floor and I would just take two hands and I'd start here and pull over to let's say it was 25 inches and then I would take my uh, my knife and I cut this right here and I'd have my 25 inches so I would cut all five of my my cuts for 25 inches and and I put them up here and then I come down here and I would do for 21 inches I'm pretty sure that was a number uh, then I did I did for 18 and then I believe 14 was another and uh, then we went to 12 and I believe 8 was the smallest and I, once I knew what my cut list was once I made all my cuts I came back I took them all individually I uh, trimmed back the wire uh, cut back the the um, insulation uh, and then I tinned every single end and then I did the same with my RGB nodes. I cut them all per length per V section. And then after that, it was nothing but soldering and soldering and soldering for hours and hours. Then the hard part, believe it or not, the hard part, none of this is hard. It was very time consuming. The hard part was actually putting the nodes onto, onto the... Um, uh, getting the nodes to stay on or putting them onto um, onto the tree. My shop had a very limited amount of space. Uh, I'm, I'm sure we all collect stuff and I had a lot of stuff in my shop. So I'd set this on the floor and I'd work with one section and I would, as I soldered it and got it assembled, I started putting it on the tree and measuring it out to make sure it was fitting. At first, since this was my first tree, you can see some of my cuts weren't exact and I have all this excess wire that is left over at the bottom and I gathered it in the middle because you really didn't notice it uh, the other ones were much better as I got as you do as you do mass production you become better at what you do but um, but that is the just of how I got my RGB dumb nodes onto this individual tree um, this was a lot of work I want to say the first one this first one took me 13 or 14 hours just to figure out what to do and do the assembly after I came up with the mass production and I had uh, my lines and my cut marks and everything set up I want to say that this sped up to about 11 10 hours I think was the max that I bumped one of these out and still 10 hours of doing this five hours one night and five hours to finish it the next at, at, during the holiday was I was just going crazy I didn't want to finish them but I'm glad I did and uh, so th that's pretty much the how-to uh, if you have any questions um, I know this this video gets quite long but this is this is pretty much one of the uh, one of the the my favorite parts of the entire display it's a labor of love and this these trees came out so well so nice that I wanted to share how I did them um, and, and like I said, I, I, I really do love them. They, they are the highlight of my entire display. Even though I love my mega tree, my pixel mega tree, this, these trees were so much work, but they have come out so nice and everybody's commented on them. So uh, share your comments. Let me know what you think. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that if you do decide to do this, know that this is a lot of work. Know that you're going to order some pixels or dumb RGBs that you trust, that you really feel comfortable and confident with doing, because these are going to last you hopefully for many, many years years with very few problems. So uh, this is Clyde signing off from the Leechburg Light Studio. Guys, if you have any questions, let me know. Have a great one. Bye.